Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The ceremony will begin momentarily. Please take the sign to silence all electronic devices. Thank you. Good morning, on behalf of Governor Jared Polis, Commander-in-Chief of the Colorado National Guard, Lieutenant General Michael A. Lowe, Director of the Air National Guard, Brigadier General J Laura L. Clellan, the Acting General of Colorado, and the citizen soldiers and citizen airmen of the Colorado National Guard, welcome to today's ceremonies. We honor Colonel Paul Franz on the occasion of his promotion to the rank of Brigadier General. My name is Chaplain David Nagel, and it's my distinct honor to serve today as the Master of ceremonies. Members of the official party today include the presiding official, Lieutenant General Michael Lowe, Director of the Air National Guard, and Chaplain Paul Franz, Air National Guard Assistant to the Chief of Chaplains, Headquarters, United States Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for recognition of the presiding official and singing of our national anthem by Religious Affairs Airman Master Sergeant Kristen Johnson, NCOIC of the 140th Wing Chaplain Office, and remain standing for the invocations. This is a chaplain promotion, so a lot of praying. Provided by Chaplain Major Joey Papa Smurf Friedman of the 140th Wing Coing, and Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Joe Flattop Murphy of the Colorado Air National Guard. Sergeant Johnson, that was beautiful. The first blessing is from Chaplain Joey Friedman. He sends this note. Due to his Sabbath observation, he was unable to be here with us today. And he says this, if there is anyone who would be understanding and forgiving of that, it is today's honoree. Chaplain Franz is arguably the most compassionate, understanding, and respectful chaplain with whom I've ever had the honor to serve. Therefore, it is truly my honor to offer up this blessing prayer on behalf of Chaplain Brigadier General Franz. I invite you to quiet your hearts as I read this blessing. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, we pray that you will be with Chaplain Franz as he is promoted to Brigadier General and accepts the responsibilities of his new position. Lord, we pray that you will strengthen his arms as he cradles your children in both celebration as well as in sorrow, that you sustain his heart, that he may be open to other hearts 
to you as well. That you uplift his spirit so he may uplift others through his actions and words, through his prayers and his teaching. Father, we also pray for his wife, Cindy, that she be granted continued good health and increasing strength as she continues being the incredibly supporting, supportive partner she has been to her husband these many years. Finally, God, we invoke at this time and this place the priestly blessing upon Chaplain Franz. May the Lord bless you and watch over you. May the Lord cause his countenance to shine on you and favor you. May the Lord raise his countenance toward you and grant you peace. All this we pray in your great and awesome name. Amen. Chaplain Murphy, at this time, will come forward for our second invocation. How do you like that? A chaplain's promotion, you get two invocations. <laughs> Please be at ease for a moment. In Psalm 118, it says, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today is that historic day and event for the state of Colorado, where the first time the National Guard chaplain of this state will serve as Brigadier General and a liaison to the Chief of Chaplains. First, I'd like to recognize and celebrate your service, Chappie, and just share what an honor it's been to serve with you over these what, 10 or 12 years. You know, I want to give thanks to the Lord who has made this day a reality and give thanks for all your service and pray for your new service at the highest levels. You know, all those in leadership know it's hard work to be in a leadership position. Moses found that out pretty quickly. Sometimes feeling pushed and dragged by the Lord to do things he didn't even feel capable of. But the Lord enabled him to do all things that were needed. He finished his work of leading the people of Israel. And the mantle of leadership was passed to a man named Joshua. And we read the words of Moses entrusting Joshua with this charge from Deuteronomy chapter 31. Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with this people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them and you shall put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Thus I invite you to pray with me. Our Father who is in heaven, we thank you for this day, for the many have made this day possible, for the gifts of service that you have given to chaplain friends that enable him to serve both our state and nation. You have given to him a deep love for your word. You have created with him and in him a heart that prays. You have given him a will to serve those who serve. As he assumes the mantle of national leadership in the Air National Guard Chaplain Corps, we ask that as you once blessed Joshua with gifts of leadership, you will also bless Paul that he would be strong and courageous, filled with the spirit of wisdom. Bless him with the conviction that you will ever go before him, that you will be with him, that you will never forsake him. Bless all his service, watch over and care for his family this day and forevermore. Bless our nation with your protection. In the holy name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Friedman and Chaplain Murphy. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. We are honored to have a number of distinguished guests, friends, and family members with us this morning. Joining us as a person from the Fonz family is lovely wife, Cindy, their daughter, Shannon Otter, and her husband, Jeff, and their kids, Levi and Lucy, Miss Kristen Franz, and Robin Brasso, and her husband, Tyler, and kids, Jack, Charlie, and Ollie, his brother-in-law, Dan, Melamon, and his wife, Sue, and joining us virtually from his family today online, his mother Patricia Franz, his mother-in-law Patricia Melamon, his brother Glenn Franz, his sister Meredith Crum and her husband Dennis, and his sister-in-law Beth White and husband Greg. Our distinctive, uh, distinguished visitor list today is wonderful. First Lady of the Air National Guard, Mrs. Diana Lowe. The 42nd Adjutant General of Colorado, Major General Retired H. Michael Edwards and his wife Lori. 
Former mobilization assistant to the combatant commander, United States North American Aerospace Defense Command and former director of Joint Staff Force Headquarters, Colorado, Major General, retired Peter Byrne and his wife, Janet. That's quite a business card right there. <laughs> the 44th Assistant General of Colorado, Brigadier General Laura Cloan. Senior enlisted leader to the Assistant General of Colorado, Command Sergeant Major Bill Woods and his wife, Stephanie. Director of Joint Staff, Joint Force Headquarters, Colorado, Brigadier General Scott Sherman and his wife, Valerie. Senior enlisted leader to the Director of Joint Staff, Joint Force Headquarters, Colorado, Command Sergeant Major Patrick Ustchuk and his wife, Laura. Commander, Colorado Army National Guard, Brigadier General Doug Paul. And Commander, Colorado Air National Guard, Brigadier General G General Floyd Dunstan and his wife, Cheryl. Distinguished visitors joining us online today, Major General Greg Y.T. White and his wife, Sarah. And Chaplain Major General Stephen Scheidt, Chief of Chaplains Headquarters, United States Air Force, and his wife, Denise. We would also like to welcome all those joining us, commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, citizen soldiers, citizen airmen of the Colorado National Guard, co-workers, and friends joining us from all over the world today. Thank you for joining us on this special occasion as we celebrate with the Franz family. Join me in a round of applause. The, the bio of Chaplain Franz. Chaplain Colonel Paul Franz, known by all as Chappie, began his Air Force career in 1976 as an enlisted airman. He actually left high school early in his senior year and obtained a GED from the state of California in order to enlist in the Air Force and become an aircraft mechanic. Having served, uh, excelled as an F-4 crew chief by the grace of God, he received in-service appointment to the United States Air Force Academy graduating with honors and a degree in aeronautical engineering. While in Colorado Springs, he met his lovely bride, Cindy. They were married in the Academy Chapel, three days after graduation, and then off to Shepherd Air Force Base in Wichita Falls, Texas, for pilot training. This was the beginning of what Cindy refers to as their Join the Air Force in C, Texas career, <laughs> moving from Shepherd Air Force Base to Bergstrom Air Force Base in Austin, Texas, where he was an RF-4C aircraft, co com aircraft commander and squadron tactics officer. And then back to Shepherd Air Force Base where he was a T-38 instructor pilot and chief of T-38 academics. In 1990, Colonel Franz, Cindy, and their three daughters, Shannon, Kristen, and Robin, left the Air Force to join the United Airlines team, eventually becoming a Boeing 777 captain. But this wasn't the end of their brush with the military. After a break in service, including four and a half years of seminary, Colonel Franz was later recommissioned in the Colorado Air National Guard as a chaplain, a job he refers to as the best he's ever had, initially rising to the position of 140th Wing Chaplain, and then Joint Force Headquarters Colorado State Chaplain. As Wing Chaplain, he set the standard for chaplain domestic operations response while deployed to Oslo, Washington in support of Fatality Search and Recovery Team operations there and was recognized by National Guard Bureau for best practice chaplain operations. As the state chaplain, he served as the principal advisor to TAG and the Joint Staff on Religious Affairs and the impact of religion on joint and combined operations, as well as moral, ethical decision making. He was also responsible for readiness and overall supervision of all chaplain corps members of the Colorado Military Department and was the SME coordinator for employment of religious support teams and domestic ops and military engagements at the strategic and operational echelons. As state chaplain, he has also supported the Colorado National Guard leadership and interest by engaging senior leaders in the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, Republic of Slovenia, and the Nation of Israel. Chaplain Franz is currently serving as the Air National Guard Assistant to the Chief of Chaplains, Headquarters United States Air Force. He is the Principal Advisor to the Air Force Chief of Chaplains in all matters pertaining to the 600 Air National Guard Chaplain Corps members serving 90 wings and 54 states, territories in the District of Columbia in order to achieve maximum operational synergy with active duty forces. He also advises on all matters relating to the utilization of Air National Guard Chaplain Corps personnel covering the full spectrum of readiness, religious support, and spiritual fitness for homeland and global operations. In addition, Chaplain Franz leads eight Air National Guard senior leader chaplains assigned to six major commands, two combatant commands, and two numbered air forces. As a former military pilot, he has over 1,700 flight hours, including duty in Italy and Panama. 
As a chaplain, he has supported military members from four branches of service, including both foreign and domestic operations. A testimony, in Chappie's words, to the Lord truly going before me. His call sign, Chappie, readily adopted by all of us with love as the adopted pastor of the Colorado National Guard. Quite a bio. We will now present Colonel Franz with the Army Commendation Medal for his tireless efforts in 2020, overseeing the Joint Task Force Centennial Chaplain Team response for the COVID-19 mission, which continues to this day. And Legion of Merit for his tenure with the Colorado Guard is being processed at the current time. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Military members, attention to orders. This is to certify that the Secretary of the Army has awarded the Army Commendation Medal to Colonel Paul E. Franz, Joint Task Force Centennial for exceptional achievement and selfless service while assigned to the Joint Force Headquarters Colorado from 1 April 2020 to 1 July 2020. Colonel Franz displayed extraordinary dedication during the COVID-19 support mission. His outstanding accomplishment directly impacted mission success within the Joint Task Force and Joint Operations area, leading to increased efficacy and morale. Colonel Franz's performance reflects great credit upon himself, Joint Task Force Centennial, and the Colorado National Guard. Signed, Brigadier General Douglas A. Paul, Commanding General for the Colorado Army National Guard. Round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing. Prepare for the reading of the order. Publish the order. Very good, sir. Military members, attention to orders. Special order number GOM0132101, dated 13 January 2021. The President of the United States, acting upon the recommendation of the Secretary of the Air Force, has placed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, integrity, and abilities of Colonel Paul E. Franz. In view of these special qualities and his demonstrated potential to serve in the higher grade, Brigadier General Select Paul Franz has extended federal recognition and appointed as a reserve of the Air Force to Brigadier General effective 1 February 2021. By order of the Secretaries of the Army and Air Force signed, Daniel R. Hokinson, General, Chief, National Guard Bureau. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. We now invite members of the Friends family to join us. Shannon, Jeff, Levi, and Lucy for this first batch. Please come forward. Kristen, Rob, and Jack Charlie with Ollie and Mimi. Please come forward to help out. <laughs>
are now honored to have Lieutenant General Lowe administer the oath of office, Brigadier General Franz. I, Paul Edward Franz, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Colorado, and the Constitution of the State of Colorado, against all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear true, true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States, that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the Governor of the State of Colorado, and the Governor of the State of Colorado, that I make this obligation freely, that I make this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Brigadier General, discharge the duties of the Office of Brigadier General in the Air National Guard, in the Air National Guard, Upon which I'm about to enter, upon which I'm about to enter, so help me God. So help me God. Please be seated. At this time, Command Sergeant Major Bill Woods, Senior Enlisted Leader to the Adjutant General of Colorado, and Command Sergeant Major Patrick Huschuk, Senior Enlisted Leader to the Director of Joint Staff Colorado, will now present Brigadier General Franz with his General Officer flag. The Air Force authorizes individual flags to those who warrant them by virtue of their office. A general officer flag is issued upon promotion to every Air Force general officer since they were first authorized by General Order No. 4, dated 22 August 1903. The flag is on a blue background and displays white stars corresponding to the rank of the general officer. This flag signifying the presence of a Brigadier General will be present at all official military functions attended by Brigadier General Franz and will be visibly displayed in his office.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is now our distinct honor to introduce Lieutenant General Michael Lowell for a few remarks. Hey folks, this is a great day. And it really is, and it's a true testament to both the Colorado National Guard, but more importantly, the Frogs family. Um, I'm going to start off this way. And I really don't have any prepared remarks. I've been going through my head. How do you honor a chaplain? Who prays for our chaplains? As you can see, two invocations. Well, right now, we have chaplains and religious support teams deployed worldwide. So if you're so inclined, please join me in a moment of silence and a prayer for all of them. Thank you. Now, big round of applause. Kristen, great job. been that in many of my promotions and your voice has to change and it's as beautiful as ever. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have a lot of thanks and I am going to start with a bunch of thanks and then we're going to go there. Um, there's probably a story you don't know here but I've probably known Chappie longer than anybody else in this room. Maybe even longer than Cindy. <laughs> Maybe. No, I get the no. So probably not. But other than Cindy... We'll see how it goes. All right. First and foremost, Cindy, thank you. I, this career he's had does not come up, come without the sacrifices you and the family have made. You've built this wonderful family, and you stand side by side with him each and every day. And I know everything that he's done involves you. And I can't thank you I can't thank the girls enough for what they've gone through. Everything that he's missed, everything you said goodbye to him, you are a National Guard spouse like no one. No, thank you. And I mean <laughs> He's had many lives. And Paul's career is really about dedication, perseverance, and service. And we're going to talk about a little bit of all of those three. First time I met him, I was 18 years old. I was a cadet, a freshman, in 26 squadron. And he was this really, really old guy. <laughs> who was at the Air Force Academy with a bunch of ribbons on his chest that I was calling Sir because he was also an instructor, a scuba diving instructor who ran the scuba club at the Air Force Academy because after he graduated high school, graduated, GED, GED, GED close enough, close enough. <laughs> after he went to high school, he went off into the United States Air Force and then, like many people in this room know, there's that unique aspect of military service and prior military service and making it work to go to the Air Force Academy. And that's where he wanted to go. So he's there as an upperclassman, two degree long a freshman, and he taught me a lifelong lesson. And it was stupid diving. And for about 30 years until they changed my license, as I got more qualified, I had his name on the back of my license for 30 years. Paul E. Franks. Never forget. Still, I still have it sitting in a drawer at home. But he took me down a blue hole and taught me that. That was Paul's first lesson to me. He's taught me many, many more since then. But that was his first lesson. And then went after that, and you heard his bio. But he went down to Shepherd. You're on the Joint Joint Jet by the train. I followed him a couple years after that one. He went down to fly the RF-4, a legacy platform. Why? Because he had worked on it, and a C-model no less. And the ability to travel around the world 
and do what we take for granted now, but grabbing pictures, developing old film, and doing things that we do in the intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance efforts, he was doing that in a platform of an RF4. And then, as you said, it's the journey of Texas. You go back to being an instructor at your Orlando Point Jet Potter and learn what it means to deliver air power and train air power in this NATO joint and coalition world. How we build air forces around the world and then how we train. Now that brings me to phase two. And most people don't know this story. So he leaves in 1990 and gets hired by this wonderful airline called United Airlines. In 1990, United Airlines was not even looking at a fighter pilot. They didn't. Single, single seat, most of us didn't understand how to run a crew, right? But they would hire somebody who did ATC work because they loved instructors and they loved what he could do. And I see, I saw Paul Valley up there. Paul, thanks for being here from United Airlines. He's at least one from United. I know there's many more of us. And so Paul goes in there and sets the standard for why an organization ought to hire military members. The training, the instructional capacity, and what he's done in his time at United Airlines is nothing short of remarkable. He's changed culture. When we needed to change culture in the pilot group, it was Paul that we had trusted with in going out there in small groups and very large groups on how we were going to get after an airline culture. So he's done everything from platform instruction to instruction in the airplane. And he's actually changed the culture inside of United Airlines for things like fuel savings, for things like command leadership and resource management, CLR. And those are the things, the other part of that instruction, that we all benefited from. And how to build a safer airline. But as you can see, he likes learning things. So then he goes and spends four and a half, five years in seminary. Because he finally found his call. During that time, he spent a little bit of time in the reserves, not really active. And then he spent a long break, not doing anything in the military. But once he got to seminary, and he found his call, thank you again, Cindy. He said, I need to give back to this wonderful thing called national defense. And I know I can do it. Because a lot of the pilots that I hang out with talk about this wonderful thing called the National Guard. And what the National Guard brings to national defense. And I know I'm way too removed to come back in as a pilot. But I'm not way too removed to come back in as a chaplain. And this is where the story goes. So. We convinced him to come out to Drill Weekend. And we introduced him to none other than Mike Farmer Edwards. And sir, I don't remember if it's when you were uh, the wing commander or when you were up here as tag, because it was there. Now, he'd been out. And there are a myriad of rules and instructions about how you cannot get back in. <laughs> That's that one-way door. Thank you very much for your service. But you know, you've been way too... I mean, there's no way. It just can't happen. Well, i tell you what it did happen. We all know what happened. We know the end state. You just don't know how it got there. I don't know what it took to cash in, Farmer, and I really don't. But all I know is you would not let this person that wanted to serve not serve. That's the easiest way to put it. You broke down every door back at the Air National Guard Rating Center, going to the Chief National Guard Bureau, and making sure that we got Paul Franz back in the Air National Guard. Farmer, we owe you a debt of gratitude. Thank you very, very much. You've heard the stories. He comes in the wing. And then he comes down to this wonderful thing called the Joint Staff. 
and the director of the joint staff at the time was none other than Pete Byrne. Pete, you want to come up and brag a little bit about Chappie here? <laughs> sure. Thank you. Come on up.
and the dual status command, of course, and talk about why a religious support team is so vital in operations. Now, we knew about it deployed overseas, but in domestic operations, he was the one that led the way. And every time he would go down there to meet, General Grass would invite him into his office. And he, and he said, that inspired me more than anything else. And so as Paul continues on that, and we heard that Steve and Denise Shecker on the phone, our neighbors, Diane and I as neighbors, but the chief of chaplains, that's the kind of story that our chief of chaplains needs to hear. It needs to hear how impactful our chaplain corps is to our airmen and our soldiers and our sailors and marines, and both at a leadership level and then all the way down at the airman level. There were many times when he and I would go out before I left here as the Adjutant General, and he'd hit me up at the end, and we'd go out and see 100 airmen and soldiers. And he goes, sir, Cindy and I got about another nine or 10 new cases we're taking on at, after this. Because there are people out there going through things that they've never seen before. But he pours his heart and soul into this. And so, when General Hoganson looked at that operational experience, looked at the domestic experience, looked at the civilian leadership skills, he said, there's no one I'd rather have as my chief of chaplains, the assistant to the Air Force Chief of Chaplains than Paul Franz. So Chapman, it's time. Yes, sir. And you're going to be busy. Yes, sir. <laughs> because there's no shortage of work up there. <laughs> so from all of us, thank you for continuing to serve. It is a family affair, but more importantly, it's all of you and all of you on the TV. God bless. Let's continue to support and pray for our chaplains. They really do take care of us. And thanks for all you're going to do in the future. Thank you. Thank you, General Wall. The Colorado National Guard Chaplain's Office will now present Brigadier General Franz and his, and his wife Cindy with a few tokens of their sincere appreciation. But first, a special written note from our former state chaplain and mutual mentor, Chaplain Colonel Retired Andy Meverden and his wife Myra. I met with them this week face to face. He sends this note to you. Chaplain Brigadier General Paul Franz and Cindy, unable to be with you in person on this amazing day, Myra and I join you in spirit, if not virtually, to acknowledge God's blessing in your lives. Who would have thought that a high school dropout would get his, get his GED, be accepted into the U.S. Air Force Academy, become a fighter pilot, marry a godly woman, become an airline captain, complete seminary, be rejected from the Army Guard chaplaincy due to age, only to be accepted into the Air Guard chaplaincy? How Do You Like Me Now might be your new theme song. <laughs> but I prefer the hymn, I've Been Redeemed, to describe what brings us to this moment. May God continue to guide and bless this capstone, uh, what brings us on this special moment. This capstone assignment is Deputy Assistant to the Chief of Chaplains of the Air National Guard. Lieutenant General Lowe, this is his words to you. Please use Walt Paul wisely, but don't break him, please. <laughs> All aim high, show us the way. Andy and Myra never did. These gifts offered by the Colorado Army National Guard Senior Religious Affairs NCO Staff Sergeant Austin Fox include yellow roses for Cindy, the color symbolizing friendship, as there has been no better friend to our Corps over the last six years than Mrs. Burns. Also include a few historic chaplain books of worship and scripture from our archive. The first being a book of worship for United States Armed Forces from 1974, nearly the year that you joined the military, and holy scriptures from 1941, a few years before the official birth of the United States Air Force 
along with the flag and one of our coins. Uh, Chappie, I want you to hear the words inscribed on this book from 1941. To the members of the Army, as Commander-in-Chief, I take pleasure in committing the reading of the Bible to all who serve in the armed forces of the United States. Throughout the centuries, men and women of many faiths and diverse origins have found in the sacred book words of wisdom, counsel, and inspiration. It's a fountain of strength and now, as always, an aid in attaining the highest aspirations of the human soul. Very sincerely yours, Franklin D. Roosevelt. May these tokens of appreciation in the card from our team coupled with the chaplain coin and personal flag be a somber reminder that we stand on the shoulders of giants, shepherds who have gone before us to care for the soul of men and women in uniform. Please receive these in our sincere appreciation for the love and example you and Cindy have shown us, your hospitality and love during the season of leadership. We are very proud to see you represent the Chapel Corps of the Colorado National Guard at the highest of levels of military leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct privilege at this time to introduce to you the newest general officer of the National Guard, Brigadier General Paul Franks. Thank you, Leonard, for being there with mom. 
and uh, and my dad, who has who has since passed and is with the Lord. But uh, what a wonderful mom and dad encouraged me. Uh, she's my biggest cheerleader. You know how moms can be; they embarrass you all the time by telling everybody in front of you all the things you've done. And that's my mom, and I appreciate you, mom, and I love you. And uh, Kristen's going to take these for you. whose name is also Pat, Patricia, and a wonderful father-in-law who's also since passed, uh, Sid. I love you guys so much. Uh, she's watching online as well. And Nan Sue's going to take the flowers for her. So thank you guys, Sue. Okay, sorry about that. And Lieutenant Lee needs a mic. I'll walk back over here and get caught up. Uh, you know, it's funny, as, as Sid and I had gone over the guest list, we just had so much fun uh, just looking at all the people that, that have impacted our lives over the years. And uh, so appreciate all of you. I wanted to take a minute and kind of focus on what we're doing here and, and where the Lord has brought us as a family and just honor some of those individuals that God has placed at specific points in our life I'm kind of chronologically working through. I can't cover everybody, and I apologize. I look around the room, and every single person in here means so much to me. It means so much to Cindy, but I would like to just mention a few if I could. First, I want to thank God, who, through the Lord Jesus, is the reason Cindy and I serve in the first place. I mean, He's our foundation of our faith, and our foundation for our life, and our foundation for all of the service that we do. Uh, and we've already talked about uh, the Cindy and the family. I want to mention uh, two men and their wives. Uh, current retired Michael Graham and his wife Deborah, who are here with me today. Mike was my prep school roommate uh, way back when, uh, when that was 1977, 78. And uh, uh, and Colonel retired uh, Rick Burgess and his wife Sandra, who are viewing online. He was also one of our prep uh, squadron mates. And and God put these these men into my life at a critical time in my faith journey. And I appreciate you so much for that and, and helping me to walk straight and narrow and, and turn out to be the, the person I hope that uh, uh, honors the Lord. So I want to thank you. To, uh, <laughs> we'll leap forward a little bit. I'm going to come back to a few folks, but uh, I want to mention uh, Reverend Dr. Jan McCormick and her husband Steve who are here. She, uh, when I was at Denver Seminary, is a retired Air Force chaplain, and she's also the director of the chaplain program and the uh, pastoral uh, counseling program there as well. She's since gone on to do uh, much bigger things there with CPE and a lot of stuff, but uh, she's been an encouragement to me, a mentor, a friend, and I thank you so much for, for all of you. Chaplain Colonel retired Greg Tate and his wife Barb, who are watching online. Uh, Greg was the one that really went to bat for me uh, ahead of what uh, General Lowe had said and, and really uh, pulled some strings and able to get me uh, back in. The age waiver was a big issue with me getting back into the military. And Greg is a, a dear friend, and I thank you so much uh, for, for, for having faith in me and, and going to bat for me, Greg. So I want to mention him. And, uh, Lieutenant Colonel retired Tom LaValle and his wife Nona. Uh, Tom's a great friend of mine, academy classmate, uh, went to pilot training together, a dear brother and sister. And Tom actually swore me in. Uh, when I got back into the military, he was the one that got to swear me in and recommissioned me. So thank you so much. You know, when I when I look at when I look at Tom, he gives new meaning to the word encouragement. He really does. And I appreciate you so much for that, brother. Uh, Major General uh, True Iyer, who's not here, and his wife uh, Deb, uh, hopefully they're, they're able to watch online. And Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel uh, Ron Procise, that he was the wing commander and the wing chaplain when I came back in that welcomed me uh, to Buckley. And of course, with a lot of strings being pulled behind the scenes, I uh, was able to get back into the military, so I wanted to make sure I mentioned them as well, for taking a chance on the old guy coming back in and, and giving me a job out at Buckley. Uh, we already heard from my chaplain, uh, Colonel Retired Andy Neverton. He was the state chaplain when I came in as well. Uh, dear friend, a uh, mentor, a leader. And uh, Andy and Myra appreciate you so much as well. And then uh, Major General Mike Edwards, we already heard about. He was the, uh, um, I guess, the, uh, the tag when I came in as the, uh, uh, one of the chaplains in the wing. And uh, a great leader. He was also the person who brought me onto the joint staff and really gave me that shot. 
to, to, to serve both the Army and the Air. That was the first time. It's funny, I had to carry around in my, my little uh, chaplain notebook a list of Army ranks so I could tell who, who was who. Because I was just an Air Force guy and didn't know how to speak Army. So it was so much fun then broadening the ministry and being able to serve both the Army and the Air uh, from the, the joint level. And I appreciate you so much for that, sir. And then we heard about uh, Major General Smokey Byrne and his wife, Janet, and uh, all the, the, the interactions that we had and your leadership, sir. Uh, there when I was at the joint staff as well. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Lieutenant General uh, Mike Lowe was then uh, the uh, Adjutant General of Colorado, and I served under him as well. We had some great times, got to travel together, uh, had a lot of fun. And again, I thank you so much for pushing me forward, encouraging me, and uh, making this day happen, sir. I appreciate that very much. Um, Brigadier General Laura Cleveland, I saw you here, man, right, right up front here. She's a tag now. Although we've only gotten to serve uh, as a tag and, and the state chaplain together for a few months, I, I really appreciate you, man. We've known each other for a lot of years. We've traveled around the Blackhawks together, visiting the troops around the state. And one of the things I really appreciate is your, your, your open care for the troops. That has always just uh, exuded from you. And you're a great leader, and, and I think you're going to take very good care of the troops uh, while you're here. And Chaplain Joe Murphy will be coming up and being the state chaplain. I think you'll make a great here. So thank you, man, for your leadership and your mentorship as well. Uh, chaplain Colonel retired Steve West and his wife Sherry. They'll be doing online. He's my endorser. I mean, he was a, he's a retired uh, uh, chaplain colonel from the Air Force, and uh, he uh, endorses for the Evangelical Chaplains Commission, which is the organization that basically endorses me and allows me to be a chaplain. So I appreciate his leadership and, and all of the things that they've done for, for us as well, as well as the Grace Chapel Elder Board and Missionary Care Team. You know, for a chaplain, anybody can't just be a chaplain. You have to be a member of a specific faith organization. You have to have an endorser that tells the military that, yes, this person is legitimate in their faith group that they represent. And they have to have a church that supports them as well. And if you don't have that, you lose your cross. You've got to have that support and that backing and that accountability. So I appreciate that so much from uh, Grace Chapel as well. Getting to the end of my list here. So uh, I want to mention uh, Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Joe Flattop Murphy. Where did you go, Joe? Uh, okay. It's funny because he's not flat top anymore. The whole, the whole time I've known him, I used to be flat top because he always had to prove up with a flat top. But then COVID hit, he couldn't get his hair cut for a while. And he said, hmm, I kind of like this. So now he's not flat top anymore. One of, the, one of the funny things is as soon as I came to the joint staff, the first thing I did is, a, you know, former fire pilots, everybody had that call signs, right? So we've got, you know, Papa Smurf is our, our rabbi. He goes by Papa Smurf because uh, the initials are PS, so he always has to have the last word, right? <laughs> <laughs> we've got Flat Top, and we've got RT, Dave RT, and we've got CJ, and uh, so all of these wonderful, wonderful men and women that serve with us in the chaplain corps has been, uh, been wonderful. Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Dave uh, RT, uh, Nagel is the uh, full-time support chaplain and uh, for the Colorado National Guard. And, and this man here really is um, a lot of why I'm standing here today. All of you leaders know that it just takes uh, a great support folks. And he's not even a support person. I mean, he just runs out ahead and leads me and, uh, and takes care of all the business and then I get all the credit. One of the things he tells me all the time is, Chappie, I'm just here to hold your arms up. Right? I'm just here to lift up your arms and to help you to serve. And he sure does that, and he does it well. And I appreciate you so much for that, brother. And uh, his wife, Christina, as well. Thank you so much. Um, chaplain Colonel Jesse Staunton and his wife, Mary, who couldn't be here with us today. Uh, senior Army Chaplain, again, who helped me to learn how to speak Army. Uh, great brother. We've had a, a wonderful time serving together. And I appreciate you so much for your friendship and your leadership as well. And then looking into the future, I just want to want to thank... Uh, uh, Chaplain Major General Stephen Scheich and his wife uh, Denise uh, for, for welcoming Cindy and I onto your team. Uh, we look forward to what the Lord has in store for us out there in D.C. And also uh, um, uh, Chaplain Brigadier General Randy Kitchens and his wife Sherry. He's the Deputy Chief of Chaplains. I'm really looking forward to working with you uh, gentlemen and, and your wives as well, families, uh, as we get up there. And finally, as you can imagine, it takes a lot of work to pull off an event like this. So I want to thank Lieutenant Colonel Susan Ruby, who, uh, along with uh, Janelle Darnell, everybody knows, and along with Dave Nagel, really made today happen. A lot went along behind the scenes, and I appreciate you so much for that. And uh, special thanks to Kristen Johnson. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you so much for, for blessing us with the national anthem. For uh, Command Sergeant Major Woods and Yushchuk, the 
flag ceremony. Um, sorry, maybe you still came up and said, you can do the flag ceremony? And I said, what's that? <laughs> so you love it. So uh, thank you so much for doing that and uh, blessing and, and honoring me with that and us. Uh, Chaplain Dave Nagel for emceeing and uh, also for Chaplains Joe, Joey, and Jesse's going to bring the uh, benediction at the end. But now before I, that's kind of the end of the list there. Again, I, I know I left folks out, but um, before we leave, I want to give a tribute to a special gal here in the room. My wife and best friend. Um, and we've had an incredible ride, and it's going to be, continue to be an incredible ride. We didn't know whether this fall we were going to be, or, or spring we were going to be doing a retirement ceremony or promotions or one, and we found out in December. Um, that it would be a promotion. And uh, we're so thankful for the opportunity to continue to serve. We met in 1978 when I was a dual leader, a freshman at the academy. We dated for two and a half years and then were married in the chapel, as you already heard. And they went on to do our Joint Air Force and Sea Texas tour. And she jokes, I got to go out to Panama and Italy to fly all over the world, and she got stuck in Texas. <laughs> so uh, we loved it there. It was really, it was really good duty. But Sweetie, really, you've always been there for me, and I know it hasn't always been easy especially where you're on the other end. And I know a lot of the, uh, of the soldiers and the fighter pilots and stuff in this room will understand this comment. When you're on the other end of a, don't worry, I'm okay. Just don't turn the TV on. I'll tell you about it when I get home. I'll be home in a little bit. Phone call, right? We've all had those phone calls. I can only imagine what it must have been like for you. Hi, sweetie, we had an engine fire. But don't worry, I'm okay, I'll be home in a bit. Hi, sweetie, I had a bird. Blew out most of the canopy and just missed my head. But don't worry, I'm okay. I'll be home in a bit. Hi, sweetie, you had an engine quit. But don't worry, I'm okay. I'll be home in a bit. Hi, sweetie, I'm in Albuquerque. We blew a tire. I'm going to be here for a while. But don't worry, I'll be home in a can. Hi, sweetie, I'm in Dallas. We blew an engine. But don't worry, I'm okay. We're going to be here a while. Well, Dallas is only about an hour and a half or so from Wichita Falls, so Cindy packs up all the kids, puts them in the car, drives down to Dallas. We were actually at the Navy Dallas, which is near Fort Worth. And, uh, and they stayed with me in the queue and went to Waterworld and lived it up while they were repairing the jet so I could fly home. <laughs> so uh, we had a great time there. I never will understand Navy Dallas. There's a big lake at the end of the runway, so I roll out on the final with an engine out, and they, and they say, can you get off the runway? We've got a C-130 with an engine fire that wants to land behind you. And there's a lake at the end of the runway, and I got no brakes. So again, I never figure out why the Navy gets lakes at the end of the runways. But uh, we had a great time, didn't we? That was a lot of fun. Um, and then the only time that she was in the RSU, the RSU is the runway supervisory unit. A lot of Air Force bases have them, or had them. And it's the uh, little, little small tower at the end of the runway that they sit in and do safety checks on the airplanes before they take off and then before they land when they're on final. And every now and then you have to bring your family out, your, your wives out to the RSU, and they can watch you take off and land. So, excuse me, <clears throat> Cindy comes out to the RSU, and she's sitting there. And I'm, I'm falling out on the runway, and we take off the lady afterburners, and everything looks cool. We make this turn out of traffic, declare an emergency, come right back in and land. We come to a stop, the canopy's open, the ambulance and the fire trucks pull up. They haul us out of the airplane, put us in the ambulance, and drive us to the to the hospital. And Cindy's sitting in the RSU, like, what's going on here? You know? Well, we have fumes in the cockpit. We had blown one of our air cycle machine uh, bearings and threw magnesium into the air, and so we had toxic fumes in my backseater pass out and was able to land the airplane. But uh, she's sitting there like, you know, the only time she ever been in the RSU to watch us take off. And we had another, another emergency. So the things that our, that our spouses go through you know, for us and then is to cheer us on. And then probably the toughest of all is the day that might get stuck if you come back. Hi, sweetie. Don't turn on the TV. I'm okay. I'll be right home. Give her up. Those are tough times. And now, the many funerals and condolence calls that we've had the privilege of, of being on together, hospital visits that we've done together, as well as the marriage counseling, uh, the fun marriages, uh, the strong bonds weekends, which we so enjoy doing together, and the Gaylas at Broadmoor, those were always a lot of fun. Uh, we, we've had quite a ride together, sweetie. And there's no one in the state of Colorado who knows Chappie who doesn't know. Cindy, am I right? Yeah. But when I was in seminary, and I'll, I'll, I'll wind it down here, Cindy came up to me 
early on in seminary, and she said, I'm really excited for what we've decided to do, but I'm just not sure I'm ready to sit around and wait for the blue car to drive up the driveway again. And you all know what I mean by that. Uh, with the war kind of at its, at its height, um, we agreed that I was enjoying seminary, I was enjoying studying, and that I would continue on, and if the Lord didn't bring us together and give us both the common direction, that I would join the military. And uh, we are, are blessed that uh, we prayed about it a lot together. Uh, the Lord brought us together, gave us a vision, and, and here we are today. And I really owe all of that to, to Cindy and, and to her uh, courage uh, moving forward and trusting in the Lord that he would take care of us, and he has. So I appreciate you so much for that, sweetie. We've been through a lot together, and I can't imagine doing it without you by my side. It's experiences like these that will serve us well as we continue to minister and serve in the National Guard as he sends us to D.C. and the Lord goes before us. The smartest thing I ever did, 38, almost 39 years ago this June, was to marry my best friend, sweetie. So thank you. In closing, I'd like to share a short passage of scripture with you. In his letter to the church in Corinth, the Apostle Paul writes, that your faith not rest on the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And while God has brought all of you, all of you online, my family, uh, into my life, into our lives, to encourage us, to walk life with us, I need to never forget that it's in him and him alone that I must truly trust and hope. That we truly trust in hope. Thanks again for being here, for watching online. I'm honored. Uh, I was going to say I'm speechless, but apparently not. <laughs> uh, inside my class ring, I'll close with this. I can't even get it off. I'm kind of swollen today. But inside my class ring, I have the word inscribed heartily in quotes. And that comes from Colossians 3.23. And heartily means with all my heart. And it says... Um, Whatever you do, work at it heartily. It's up to the Lord, not to men. And that's my promise to Chaplain Shike as I come on the team, and our promise to all of you as we continue to serve, that we'll serve the Lord heartily. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the benediction provided by the Colorado Army National Guard Senior Chaplain, Chaplain Colonel Jesse C.J. Stoughton. And because Chaplain Franz was the state chaplain over the Army and Air Chaplain Corps, remain standing for the Army song followed by the Air Force song, the words of which are on the back of your program. Chaplain Stoughton.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony on behalf of Governor Jared Polis, Commander-in-Chief of the Colorado National Guard, Lieutenant General Michael A. Lowe, the Director of the Air National Guard, Brigadier General Laura L. Clone, the Adjutant General of Colorado, the citizen soldiers and citizen airmen of the Colorado National Guard, and Brigadier General Franz and his family, thank you for joining us for today's ceremony. Due to COVID safety mitigation efforts, Brigadier General Franz will not have a formal reception line. Please help yourself to the grab and go refreshments in the back of the room as you depart. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the departure of the official party, followed by the Franz family. Thank you all for joining us today. God bless.